Thank you for clicking on the video, and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, I really appreciate you checking out my content. This is Secondhand Home Theater, and my name is Matt. Uh, this channel is dedicated to talking about various home theater topics, and generally I look at them through the lens of buying things used, and talking about high quality, high value used items that you can find at a pretty bargain bin level price. Here today, this video isn't so much about that, but this does talk about one of the other kind of topics I do kind of delve into from time to time on my channel, and that's talking about DIY items here in your home theater. This is a sponsored video. I'm gonna categorize it as sponsored, uh, just to be on the safe side. But this is a sponsored video from Elite Screens, who did send me a kind of big swatch of material uh, for a projector screen uh, that's in the box behind me. It's kind of out of focus. We'll get to that a little bit later. But this is a kind of like sponsored video from Elite Screens uh, where they sent me the material in exchange for my thoughts and opinions and things on it. So just to be safe, I'm putting that in here at the front uh, just so everyone knows. But let's get on to the actual nuts and bolts of this video here today. I always like being transparent with you guys here on YouTube. I've done that with various things here on my channel over the, I don't know, like year that I've officially had the channel, but you know, more like 10 months that I've actually produced content on here, whatever the case may be. And this is no exception. So this video here today is the first in a three part series of videos I'm gonna do over the course of the next couple weeks uh, to month, give or take. So this video is more of just like the preamble or just kind of like the informative video, background video, talking about what's going to happen uh, with the next two videos in this series that are gonna come out. And the video here today, I'm gonna talk about how this kind of all came to be on my channel. And then I am going to unbox and open up the material that's in that box, kind of out of focus behind me, uh, leaning up against my wall. I'm gonna do that at the end. I don't really think that's gonna be too entertaining. It's just gonna be a big roll of material, but I am gonna do that after I finish kind of talking about the background info. How did this all come about? Again, I like to be fully transparent with everybody, you know, who watches these videos. And I will tell you right up front, I did not have any intention of doing sponsored videos here on my channel. Uh, that was never really a part of my plan or anything that I thought about when I started making content here on YouTube. And Elite Screens reached out to me. I never reached out to them to do this. Uh, they actually reached out to me quite early on in my YouTube life. Uh, not that I've been on here all that long. I've only had a channel for a year, but they reached out to me uh, through a gentleman, a rep named Raphael. Shout out to Raphael. Uh, he reached out to me with an email back after I had only posted like four or five videos. So relatively early on in my YouTube career, I had only done a handful of videos. And he reached out to me and had asked, hey, would you be interested in doing a sponsorship video, you know, partnership, uh, collab kind of thing? It'd probably help boost your channel, you know, and get some more views and some more followers and stuff out there. And again, to be fully transparent, I turned him down. I said no. <laughs> I big timed him, I guess, being a YouTuber with like five subscribers. I told him no. Uh, but the main reason why I did that, and I explained it to him, was that the core tenant or idea of this channel has always been and you know, for the foreseeable future is always going to be secondhand in used items and finding quality and value in used items. And I didn't feel like not only getting a brand new item in, but also being sponsored where I didn't even have to buy that item really went against my core idea, value, tenant, whatever term you want to put on it for this channel. And so I just politely told him no, explained my kind of reasoning for it. And to his credit, Raphael, uh, and by extension, Elite Screens, basically like said, yeah, we completely understand and actually applaud you for wanting to stick to your value with that. And we kind of just parted uh, amicably and peacefully. 
and he told me, you know, good luck on the channel, but if you ever do decide to change your mind and you wanted to do something, just reach out, you know, with my contact information and we'll see if we can do something for you. And that's kind of where it ended. And admittedly, I thought that was going to be the end of it. I didn't think it would go anywhere, you know, past that. I figured it would just be done there. But as things go, uh, that was not the case. So if you jump forward, maybe like six months, give or take, whatever it is, from that initial like email conversation I had with Raphael, my channel had grown just incrementally and steadily over the course of those months with each different upload and with each, you know, video I posted and just little things here and there. It was just kind of steadily just growing at a small, steady, incremental pace. I took it upon myself to create content, you know, for content purposes. Uh, at least that's what I've told my wife and told myself through all of this. I started purchasing some other used items uh, for my home theater. I bought some new speakers, I bought some different Blu-ray players and audio equipment that I could find here or there. But the big thing is I bought a handful of different projectors uh, over the course of, you know, whatever the six, eight months it's been since I initially talked to Raphael uh, in that initial email conversation. And with those projectors, I started delving into even higher quality projectors than what I had previously had here in my home theater. And one of the big factors, big things that goes along with that is I started getting into projectors that had a lot more lumen output from them. They weren't like lower output lumen projectors. They were actually starting to venture into, uh, you know, to use a home theater term, light cannon kind of status if I really wanted to open up the actual max brightness on those units. And that got kind of into my head and kind of made for a unique situation for me to where maybe I could utilize this whole sponsorship thing potentially with Elite Screens. I will let you know, I have always thought about having a gray material screen here in my home theater. I've really thought about that and potentially wanted one of those ever since I bought my very first projector and screen combination way back, like almost 10 years ago. And I've always thought about it, but I never felt like I could fully utilize that type of material. And rightly or wrongly, this is my opinion. The reason I say that is because I've always felt to fully utilize a gray material screen, you would need either one of two things, either a room that has no controlled light, which isn't the case. My space down here is fully light controlled. I can make it as bright or as dark as I want to in this space. But the other thing with that is having a very high lumen output projector. In my opinion, again, rightly or wrongly, you need something with a lot of horsepower behind the lumens to fully utilize the benefit of a gray material screen, which to me is the contrast ratio and the improved black levels. Since I had always had lower lumen output projectors that hovered at max, usually around a thousand lumens, you know, back even in my JVC kind of days when I had those, but extending into my Null LED, the Marantz projector I still have here, those are all projectors that are at max, if you really crank everything up in the proper kind of conditions, maybe you get a thousand lumens out of it. But most of the time, those projectors are sub 1000 lumens. And I felt having a darker screen material would really just wash out the image too much. And yeah, you would definitely see an improvement in black levels, especially with a lower lumen output projector, but you would sacrifice the overall pop and vibrant image quality that you could potentially see on say a white material screen versus a gray material because there's just not enough horsepower to really push out that vibrant color on a darker material. I started bringing in some of these other projectors. So like my Panasonic uh, RZ670 I had here for a while, but I ended up getting rid of that because too much, you know, problem with the rainbow effect and other issues. Uh, the D-Vision projector that I brought in here that is a high lumen output projector. But even more recently, and this is the first time I'm mentioning this on any of the videos, my current projector that I have here right now that has really been my mainstay uh, when I've been able to use my home theater given everything that's gone on recently. But the big one I've been using right now 
is an actual Christie projector, uh, a DWU 599GS, which is a laser phosphor projector, but it is extremely dynamic in the image quality and has a fraction of the rainbow effect that the Panasonic had back when I had that in here back over the summer. And so because of that, having that projector specifically, I have a ton of lumens that I can spare now. That thing can get up to on full blast up to like six or seven or 8,000 lumens. It is extremely, extremely bright. Uh, bright enough that if you crank it up fully on the screen I have now, it will blind you. It's, it hurts your eyes to look at the screen. And so that brings me all the way back around to Elite Screens and talking to Raphael and letting him know that, hey, I kind of have a situation now where I have some projectors that are extremely high lumen output and I think I could benefit from getting a gray material screen here in my home theater. And just as before, you know, six, seven, eight months ago, whatever it was, Raphael was extremely friendly and extremely understanding of the situation and happy, you know, to see that I was interested, you know, even though it had only been, you know, six months or whatever, to work with them. And so we kind of had a conversation back and forth, you know, we talked about what I was looking for and ultimately settled on the box that's sitting back there, which is a box of Cinegray 5D projector screen material. Now, the reason it's in a box like that is one other aspect that came into play here that Raphael was able to kind of work with me on. And that is the screen I have behind me that you can kind of see back there. I did a DIY projector screen back over the summer. And I have a video on that. It'll be linked up here in the corner. I'll have it linked at the end of the video if you're interested in watching that. I built a DIY projector screen just out of some lumber and some spandex material that I bought from Walmart. Now, when I built that screen, I had no intentions of replacing it anytime soon. And this whole Elite Screens thing kind of just came out of left field for me. I didn't think this was actually gonna happen. So when I built that, I screwed the actual lumber straight into the studs on the wall. So that screen is actually mounted directly via the lumber and bolts into the wall. And so I did not want to remove that from my wall back here because that would entail completely ripping off all the material and basically wasting it and having to throw it out, you know, cutting it off the frame and then physically removing every single piece that screwed into a stud off the wall. And I didn't want to do that because if for some reason uh, something gets botched on this Elite Screens uh, video set that I'm doing and I mess something up terribly and I can't use it, I still wanted to have this screen on the wall and be able to use that and not have nothing here and then have to go through the whole process of remounting and remaking an entire new screen again on top of what I'm already doing. So that presented a somewhat unique situation for Elite Screens and for Raphael. And so we ultimately settled on the material that he sent me, which is uh, their designer cut material. So it's a pre-cut uh, roll of material already made to be mounted on a DIY projector screen frame. And what's funny, we'll get into this here in just a minute when I unbox it, is that material is entirely too big for my space. At the time when I talked to him and we got this all set up, the smallest screen size in that pre-cut material that would fit the dimensions of what I'm trying to make here in my home theater was that box there, which that is a 135 inch pre-cut 16.9 uh, roll of the material, which admittedly would be really cool to have a screen that big here in my space, but logistically it doesn't work. It's entirely too big for my spot that I was going to mount it in, you know, up here on the wall. But that was the smallest one they had at the time. I was hoping maybe they'd have like a 120 inch roll or something. They just didn't have it. It was out of stock. But that is what that is. Because again, like I said, I wanted to mount it over my previous screen that's up there. The frame I'm going to build is just slightly bigger than what's already on my wall. So in theory, I should be able to just mount it with some like picture hangers directly over the screen I have now, and it'll just slightly e eclipse the outside of the frame of what I have there. That's my ultimate goal. We're gonna see if that works out when I build it, but uh, that's ultimately what I wanna do. So that is kind of the background of 
how all this came about and what I'm actually doing. The next video is going to be me building the projector screen. It's going to be more of a long form video, just uh, vlog style as I do everything. And you know, you guys will kind of be there to watch uh, every high and low uh, that I take with that. And we'll see what happens following that. Uh, down the road in a you know week or two, whatever the case will be, I'm going to do a final wrap-up video where I'm going to spend some time watching content and doing different things with the actual screen, and then doing kind of my thoughts, a uh, wrap-up, a review, give my opinions on the entire process of everything, and you know just kind of my impressions of what content looks like on that screen. Uh, but that's kind of what's going on in the future, but now you're gonna see a small little transition that's gonna come in here, and we're gonna unbox that screen material and see what it looks like. I'm sure it's gonna be riveting. It's just gonna be a roll of material. We're just gonna do that real quick here in this video at the end, uh, before we end this video. So stay patient. We're gonna transition now into that footage. Okay, so I've switched the camera up here. I'm sure this is an extremely flattering camera angle. Uh, as you can see, this is the box. I'm gonna try and hold this up to the camera and pardon the noise of my rolly chair. But this is from Elite Screens. This is a 135 inch 16.9 material. And before I actually cut this open real quick, I do wanna mention just a couple things. One, if you are buying material such as this, uh, whether it's from Elite Screens, another company, whatever the case may be, you wanna make sure when it's shipped, they ship it in a rolled like tube style container, like how you would roll up a poster. Because if you get it in a flat box where it is just folded over and shipped to you, you're gonna have some problems getting all the creases and everything out of the material. Now it's not impossible, you can do it, and I've done it before, and you can get the creases and all the you know kind of lines in the material out, but it takes a lot of work. You gotta stretch it properly. You've gotta heat it up to get it to kind of pull correctly. It's really kind of a pain, but it can be done. Where if you get it in a roll, where it's rolled, like I said, like how a poster would be rolled and put in a tube and shipped in a box like this, you won't really have those problems because it'll just be a roll and then you can just unroll it out and you shouldn't have any creases or anything to deal with. So definitely do that. Some companies will send it automatically like this to you. Other ones may have an upcharge for a couple dollars to send it rolled. Definitely do that because it's gonna save you time and effort and a lot of hassle in the long run uh, by doing that. Uh, you'll also know real quick or notice real quick, uh, this has a quality control sticker on it. Elite Screens especially will go and look at all your material through quality control to make sure there's no imperfections in it before they send it to you. And if there is an issue, they will find you another uh, screen or another roll of material, make sure that one passes quality control before they send it so that you don't have any issues, imperfections with the material you're buying, which is you know a really nice feature. Okay, with that out the way, let's cut this baby open. We'll see how this goes. Like I said, I'm sure this is gonna be extremely riveting uh, considering it's just gonna be a big roll of material. Okay, you know, don't mind the little jump cut there. I had to move this back, but we're gonna just slide this out. Hopefully I can fit this in here without knocking everything over. So yeah, so let's tilt the camera up slightly. We'll kind of sit this up here, hopefully. Uh, you can hopefully see it right here. The way the material is set up, it has kind of this protective layer that's just rolled kind of like a pin pinwheel kind of sandwich style that's up there. And within this material is the actual projector screen. So it's in there and it's protected. So hopefully, you know, it doesn't get dirty or anything like that because you don't want to step on it. You don't want to get it dirty. So that's basically how this is. Let's see, I'm gonna remove this sticker real quick. Let's see if we can see the material, but I don't want to unroll it too far because I don't want to just have it laying everywhere. Ah, there we go. We'll do it just like this. So yeah, there is the material. It's just a gray, almost silver material. 
right there. And that is the Cinegray 5D material. And that's as far as I'm going to unroll it because I am not ready to build the screen yet. So I don't want to have this just unravel. So yeah, there we go. There's that as I kind of bend down here to get in the video. So with that, I want to thank you guys for watching my video. Stay tuned. We're going to have the projector screen build coming up uh, next, you know, here in the next couple days on the channel. And then I'll do a final wrap up uh, review down the road uh, here in like a week or two. So with that, I'm going to say thanks to everyone who's watched my content. I do appreciate it. And I will see you the next time in the next video as we're building the frame for this material here on Secondhand Home Theater. Thank you.